The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. Baby, Mommy's got your bottle almost ready. Yes, darling. Yes, Betsy, here. Come on, I'm in the kitchen with the baby. Come on out here. Here we are, darling. Just a minute. Mommy, I haven't anything to do. Haven't anything to do? Well, why don't you set the table for Mommy? That's no fun. Well, oh, dear, and I got the bottle too warm. Just a minute, baby. I've got to cool the bottle a little. Oh, there's Daddy. Everything happens at once. Will you read me a story, Mommy? You promised you would. Well, Yes, yes, dear, just a minute. Wouldn't you know your father would get home early tonight? Well, hello, oh, hello, hello, everybody. Hi, hello. dear, you're early. I haven't even started dinner. Oh, that's okay, honey. I got something wonderful to tell you. Well, how's my Betsy? Hmm? All right. Well, she's at loose ends. Mary Lou went out of town. Hey, what the heck's the matter with you, young man? Well, he's hungry. First I got the bottle too warm, and now it's too cold. Here, huh? I think this is all right. Come on, darling. Honey, look, I, I, I finally got an idea. <laughs> honey. There, there. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> I never saw a baby with such an appetite. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I finally got the idea I wanted. Oh, that's fine, dear. Betsy, will you set the table, darling? I thought you said you were going to read me a story. You promised. Oh, I know I did. All right. Get a book. Get a book. Don't you want to hear what it is? Uh, what what is, dear? My idea. What idea? For, for a story I'm going to write for Pete's sake. Oh, my dear, I'm no mind reader. I can't guess what you're talking Since about. Me, we've talked a lot lately about my doing some writing. Yes, yes, I know. Oh, Come my on, gosh, baby. it hit me today, honey. Come you know how they've always uh, said, you know, that you should write about something you're familiar with? Yes. Here's a book, Mommy, if I ran the zoo. Oh, that again. All oh, right, I should think you'd know it by heart. She just loves these Dr. Seuss books. You yeah, know? I know, I know. Now, Betsy, <laughs> darling, will you, honey? Daddy's talking to Mommy. No. He promised to read it to me. What is it, baby? Oh, so busy with you two, I wasn't even holding the bottle up so he could get it. Look, you want to hear my idea? Oh, darling. No. Yes, dear, I do. I do. I do. Well, I do. then, would you... I, I, Here, I... Mommy, read, please. Uh, well, if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I'd do. Yeah, go ahead and talk, darling. I can hear you. Even no, no, thank you very much. I'll wait until well, you're not quite so busy. If I ran the so zoo, busy. said... <laughs> How much time do you have for winnowing over the weekends? Now, we're talking specifically about winnowing the news. Once upon a time when news traveled slowly, time and distance did the winnowing for people, leaving only what was vital. Nowadays, in our era of almost instantaneous transmission, news floods in on us, the trivial along with the vital. Have you the time to sort it over, winnowing out the happenings that are important for you to know? Nobody has, except trained newsmen. That's why you rely on CBS News to keep up with the events over the weekend. A worldwide news organization gathers the raw material. At CBS News headquarters, seasoned veterans of the news world winnow the wheat from the chaff. Then at regular intervals over the weekend, CBS News broadcasts bring you up-to-the-minute reports on what's going on all over the world. CBS News reporters and correspondents make every one of those broadcasts an illuminating and rewarding summary of just what you want to know. Keep up with the news this weekend with CBS News. All right, dear, where are you? I'm in the living room. All right, I fed the baby, read a story to Betsy, and got dinner started, so I'm all yours. Oh, Here well, I fine, am. fine, at last, huh? <laughs> I tell you, I'm so darn excited about this idea. Oh, now. that's wonderful, dear. Come yeah. on, baby, move the chair away so I can wheel the bassinet right beside us. Well, doesn't he go to sleep now? No, he generally stays awake for a while after he's been fed. Betsy used to go right to sleep, but he doesn't seem to... Do you, honey? Do you, baby? I'm dying. Mommy, darling. Isn't he adorable? Yeah, he sure is. Oh, he does. <laughs> Anyhow, he this does. is my idea. What, what I thought I'd... Oh, dear. Now what? Well, he's spitting up a little bit. Oh. Man, come on here, then. No, he's all right. Yes. Go on, dear. I'm going to think. Well, I would like oh, your darling. undivided attention. Now, all right, go on. You got it. Well, anyway. All right, now, what I thought I'd do. Now, listen, will you, please, honey, will you, are you listening? Yes, I'm listening. Is what... right about the cows. <laughs> Great idea, huh? What cows? What cows? Yeah. You don't remember two months ago when we had those two stray cows wander into town and 
Spend three days in our backyard? Oh, 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 yeah. What a time we had getting rid of them, for heaven's oh, sakes, with yeah, nobody right. claiming them. The whole Humane Society wouldn't take them. The Health and Sanitation Department was yes, on my neck. Yes, yes, I remember. Golly, three horrible days we had, and you say, what cows? Well, I didn't know you meant those cows. Well, what cows? Well, what about them? Well, look, it, it, it wasn't funny at the time. At least it wasn't funny to me. But now that I think back, it, it was pretty funny. Yeah, I guess so. They ruined the backyard. Well, anyhow, I saw Hank Redding on the street today, and somehow or other I happened to tell him about it, and, and, and he nearly died. He laughed himself sick when I told him how we were stuck with those darn animals. Uh-huh. So I thought, well, why don't I write about our experience with that, after all? <laughs> I mean, when you think... Now, what are you looking at? Oh, uh, the, the clock, dear. I put biscuits in the oven so you could have strawberry shortcake, and I have to keep track of the time. Um, well, what do you think of the idea? Well, dear, if you feel inspired to write about something like that, I Mommy, suppose... Mommy, I fell off my bicycle I... and scraped my knee. Oh, darling, did you fall off your bicycle? Well, it's not bad now, darling. You'll live. Go out in the kitchen and get the Band-Aids. Look, Daddy. Well, the trouble is, you know, as I told Hank, I said... I don't know whether I should write it up as a short story or whether it should be written as a radio or a television script, you Look know? at my knee, Daddy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Can't you look at her knee, darling? Look oh, her knee. oh, yes, yes, my goodness, darling. That, that's too bad. Where? Right here. Oh, yeah, well, get a Band-Aid, darling. Well, what do you think? Oh, I don't think she really needs them, but they come in colors now, you know, with stars and dogs no, and no, stripes darling, and darling. things like that. How do you think I should write up our experience? Oh, oh, uh, well, uh, well a short story, I would think, dear. You don't know anything about writing for radio or TV. I think you need agents and all that for that sort of thing. Or, uh, well, something you need an agent if you write stories and try to sell them, too. Yes, but but if you try to sell to a magazine, there are a lot more magazines you could sell it to. At least that, that, that's, yeah, that's what I would right, say. Yeah, that's right. That's true. You think I should write it as a fiction or a personal experience? Well, yeah, Mommy, uh, will you put it on for me? Oh, yes, all right. Well, Come maybe here, Betsy. As a Come here. personal experience sort of thing? Yeah, fine. Fine. Hold your knee up, Betsy. Will you hold your knee up? Let me get the Band-Aid on. Look, I'm yeah, sorry, but do you have any you interest in what I'm trying to tell you? Yes, of course I do, dear. Daddy's going to write a story, Betsy. About what? Oh, about the cows we had in the yard, remember? Daddy's decided to do some writing in his spare time because he's always wanted to, and he's very good at it. Oh, well, I, I don't know how good I am, but it's something I've always wanted to take a crack at. <laughs> and I think you should be wonderful for you, dear. Yeah, well, I, I think this is a pretty good idea. Honey, I thought I could call it a Holstein holiday. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, you think that's catchy enough? Well, I don't know. Well, I don't think you should worry about the title until you get it written. Well, anyhow, really, the best part. Yeah. The best part I haven't told you. What? <laughs> this will kill you. Yeah, well, I hope not, but let's hear it. What? The most important part of a story is the viewpoint. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, it's how you tell it, you uh-huh, know? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, anyhow... You I, tell I, I, me! Well, I'm going to write it from the viewpoint of a cow. Is that a great idea? It's original, you know, different. Wait, 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 wait a minute, dear. You're, you're going to do what? Well, the, the two cows were named Caroline and Jesse, so, uh, as I recall, anyhow, and when we finally found the farmer, you know, who owned them, yeah, he told us... Yeah, Caroline and Jesse, yeah. that's Well, I'll write it from the viewpoint of one of the cows. Don't you get it? Well, Well, it's I, as though, yeah. let's say, Caroline the cow were, were telling the story. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't like it? Well, I'm thinking, dear. Well, it, it's original, it's different. Uh, yes. You don't think it's too different? Oh, no. Uh-huh. It, it's, it's, uh-huh. it's, uh, What's Daddy gonna do? Well, he's going to write his story as though the cow were telling it. Oh, I think that's silly. Well, cows don't talk, Daddy. Well, neither do chipmunks or giraffes or cats or dogs. Honey. Well, why should she think it's so silly? All her books have animals talking. Well, oh, are you you writing this as a children's story? No, I'm... Look, just forget it. Just forget well, the whole thing. Well, darling, you want my thing. opinion, no. but then if I don't agree with you instantly, you get no, mad. No, no, I'm yes, not mad. Do, it isn't do. that. It's just that, I mean, a fellow, you know, you try to do a thing and... Why and... don't you write a story about my new turtle, Daddy? You could call it Myrtle the Turtle. Oh, <laughs> that's cute, Betsy. Isn't that cute, Daddy? Look, why don't you write a story about <laughs> Myrtle the Turtle? All right. Shall I do it right now? Yes, yes, yes. Do it right now. All right. Then I'll come down and read it to you. <laughs> she is so funny. Well, what's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know. Ever since the baby nurse left, I've hardly talked to you. After all, the idea in having her was so we'd have more time for Betsy and she wouldn't be jealous of the baby. I know. Maybe we ought to get another nurse. I think I'm getting jealous of Betsy and the baby. Why, honey? Well, doggone it, it's true. You know, sometimes women have children and they're so busy being mothers they forget to be wives. Well, I'm sorry. All right, dear, now you have my undivided attention. (laughs) Oh, Oh, darling, baby. My biscuits, they're burning, I'll bet. Come out to the kitchen and we'll talk out there. Let it go, let it go. Just call me when dinner's ready. 
We'll return to the couple next door in just a moment. The beauties of America have inspired any number of songs, poems, novels, and paintings, and perhaps it's lucky that they have. For unless a good many Americans start minding their outdoor manners more carefully, those written and painted pictures will give us our only clear view of how beautiful America can be. In real life, its beauty will be almost obliterated by an ever-thickening screen of trash. Wherever some drivers travel, they leave a trail of litter behind them. Everyone suffers from this kind of carelessness, and it's not just a beauty problem. Litter in parks and on highways is a safety hazard and a health menace. Removing this litter from main highways alone costs us as taxpayers more than $50 million a year. Reducing this staggering bill, removing the hazard and menace of litter, and returning America to its clean and beautiful state is a job for all of us. Only as each of us resolves not to be a litter bug can we keep America beautiful. you been? Oh, I've been down the lane talking to Fred and Jack. I told them my idea. They thought it was great. Well, fine. Then why do you look so discouraged? Well, it's funny. Now that I've told so many people about it, I kind of lost the ambition to write it. Oh, I know. Honey, you should never do that, really. <laughs> well, I think, actually, the main problem is that I don't have a good place to write. And I was thinking that probably what I should be doing right now is designing a good desk to have in my den in the new house. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Really uh, special desk, so I'd have everything handy. And if I got the desk uh, designed now and had it made, then when we move in, it'll... Well, I'd be all set to get to work, you know? Yeah, I know. Here it is. I got oh. it all written. But it's more of a poem than a story. It's called Myrtle the Turtle. Oh. <laughs> you mean you sat right down now and wrote it? Yes. Want to hear it? Why, yes, certainly. My goodness, Betsy. It's called Myrtle the Turtle. <laughs> Myrtle the Turtle. Very cute. Go on, dear. One of the things I like most about Myrtle is that she's a turtle and I'm not. I wouldn't want to be a turtle named Myrtle because eating bugs and ants is not so hot. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Betsy. That's wonderful. Isn't that, darling? Is Isn't that, that good? Yeah, yeah that my good? gosh. That's very good. Did <laughs> yeah. you write that? Isn't that well, wonderful? Well, for heaven's sake. I can't, you went right upstairs, sat <laughs> right down and wrote it. Here, let, let, me, let, me, let me see that. Yeah. Read it again. If, if, yeah. Well, if I can read it. <laughs> One of the things I like most about Myrtle is that she's the turtle and I'm not. Oh, that's darling. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a turtle named Myrtle because eating bugs and ants is not so hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, she gets that? it from you. She gets her talent from you, dear. She Have does. you written oh. your story, Daddy? <laughs> well, uh, no, no, not yet, honey. I... You ought to do it when you think of it, Daddy. Otherwise, you forget. <laughs> oh, boy. Out of the mouths of babes. Yeah. I think she's got something there. I do, too, dear. However, what Daddy's doing is much more complicated, Betsy, and I, I really feel it when I have a good workable desk, you know, with everything ready. Oh, right, I, then you right will write hand, something, dear. You know, write start some, a book you know, you or something. That, I know yes. you will, dear. <laughs> The Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Francie Myers and Madeline Pierce and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Stuart Metz inviting you to listen again tomorrow for The Couple Next Door.